Hey guys, uh, what I got is uh, I'm going to make a little video on uh, the job that I'm working on. This is actually the first machining job that I'm doing in my new shop. And uh, I've already started making some of the parts, so I kind of got ahead of doing the filming thing. I was a little excited to, to get some chips going, get thrown around in the shop. and. Uh, I just didn't really mess with the camera at all, but I've got two of the parts mostly machined, and uh, I'll show you what I've got. I've got other parts i got to make that I haven't started yet, but uh, this is one part here, and i got another part in the middle over there. Uh, this is the shaft that goes to it. It's an uh, 8-inch diameter steel roller. with uh, It's got bearings in it and an output shaft. It's sort of like an idler wheel. Uh, this is a job that I've been doing for about four or five years now uh, for a customer. They like to build new whenever they get wore out, so that's what I do. Uh, so this is the shaft, and it's completed. It's a piece of 4140, 3-inch hot rolled, and machined it. It's got a couple tap holes on this end. This is where the bearings go. There'll be a plate that gets bolted down here, which will load the two bearings. The uh, tempting bearings. So down here in the mill, this is the actual roller, and this is a uh, piece of eight-inch uh, cold roll 1018. And I've already got it machined. It's uh, three and a sixteenth thick, kind of bored on the inside for the bearing race. And what I'm getting ready to do is uh, I'm going to get it indicated. And I'm going to go ahead and start drilling my hole pattern because there's a dust cap that goes on this side and on the other side there's an actual bearing plate that gets bolted to it that uh, keeps the bearing, everything captured inside here. And the shaft will actually stick out this other side here. So I'm going to go ahead and get it trued up and uh, start doing some holes. All right, I've got the coax indicator set up, and um, I got a real height problem here with uh, using the super spacer. Uh, that's as far down as the table will go, and I'm having to use one of the long rods to get it indicate. But what I want to point out is I want to center up on this thing, and this coax indicator works pretty good, and. This is just one of those cheap, inexpensive coaxes that uh, you can buy from anybody, you know, about 150 bucks. And I know there's been a lot of discussion on forums about the quality of these things, and some guys say don't use them because they're not accurate. And I'm not arguing that. I'm sure that there is some uh, inaccuracy in these things, especially uh, a cheap, inexpensive model like this. But for a lot of the stuff that I do, getting within a couple thousandths is plenty good enough for what i'm doing right here on this side all this is going to be is four holes here for a dust cap i'm going to i've got a quarter inch thick plate that's going to have the same hole pattern that's going to bolt down here and it's kind of grease fitting on this side so using that coax is going to get me plenty within tolerance what i need for a simple hole pattern and uh Whenever I flip it over to uh, do the other side, I'm actually going to use a, a different kind of indicator and indicate this inside. This is where the race will be. And I'll make sure that it's pretty close to dead nuts accurate. As close as I can get it anyway, you know, using the spacer. You may have a little bit of run out from the, using a three jaw chuck on here, but it'll work. It'll be fine. It'll work. Uh, the other thing I was going to point out is uh, I do not have a digital readout on this machine. So I'm having to use it sort of the old school way, you know, hand dialing. And this is why I'm using the spacer is because I'm going to center up. I'm going to move half the distance to the hole pattern and I'm going to use the truck to rotate to get to my holes. That's a quick, easy way to do it. That's one of the things I like about the spacer and I use it a lot for things like that. So. I do plan on having a digital readout sometime in the future. Uh, it's one of my things that I want to uh, 
definitely save up and get for this machine. They're just really expensive and I uh, just can't get one right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing some drilling, tapping some holes here. All right, I've got an indicated center. So what I've got is a, uh, I've got a five and a half inch bolt circle. So I'm going to take and move it over two and three quarters of an inch this way. And then I'll just rotate the spacer to do each hole. And what I, what I decided to do, since I'm so limited on space, I like using a drill chuck most of the time when I can. I don't like sticking collets in and out of there. I'm going to center drill the four holes on this side. I'm going to flip the part over, re-indicate it. I'm going to dr center drill the whole pattern on that side. And once I get the center holes drilled, then I'll take the part out and just be able to clamp it straight down to the table. And I'll use my, uh, I'll just use my center point here to line up each hole and then clamp it down. I'll make things a little easier there. So I'm going to move the table over two or three quarters. Alright, should be half of it there. I'm going to spot it and rotate it and check it. Put a little mark. Alright, so I got two of them spotted just to kind of check my diameter, gauge it with some uh, digital calipers, it looks like it's right dead nuts on, uh, five and a half inch bolt circle, so I'm going to go ahead and center drill four places because there's four bolts that go to the cap, and then uh, we'll flip it over and do the other side. Alright, so there's my hole pattern for the dust cap side. Alright, I got the piece flipped over and I'm getting ready to uh, get the get this inside bore here indicated I've got another hole pattern to do on this side a a hole pattern so I've got this uh, last word indicator set up on the spindle on this little uh, bracket here that uh, 
works okay. So let's go ahead and get it indicated. Close that way. Get the other direction. Alright, it's reading plus one on the indicator. All the way around. So I'd say that's pretty well trued up. Alright, we got an indicated center. Uh, I've got the uh, spacer set on zero degrees for our starting point. The uh, hole pattern is five and three quarter bolt circle. So I'm going to take half of that, move it over to two and seven eighths. So let the hand crank and begin. like before I'm going to uh, spot one side rotate 180 spot that side give it a quick measurement with the, uh, measure with the digital calipers just to kind of you can see if you're off if you just check it like that you're not going to measure down to zero but you'll see if you're right looks like it's there About center to center, five and three quarter. So we'll go ahead and just start there since I know I'm right. And uh, we're going to be rotating it every 45 degrees. All right, there's the eight hole pattern. So I'm gonna take it out of this, I'm gonna move the spacer off. We'll set it down on the table. I'll just use a strap clamp on it. Use my center point to find the center, clamp it down, drill it and tap it. All right, I'm gonna try this again. I was having problems with the camera there. It kept wanting to shut off on me. 
after I started the first hole. I think I had too much video in there. I had to go and download them and uh, clear out the card. But uh, I got three of the holes done. I'm going to show you how I do this. I just use my center point. I'm hoping you can see the, the center drill hole there. It just centers itself up. I push down, put a little pressure on it, and just replant it. Give it a little chamfer. I've got a. I'm using a uh, two fluted spiral point tap. This is a uh, five sixteen eighteen threads. When I drill them, I got plenty of metal here, so I drill them a little bit deeper just to have some room for those chips. Cause I like to try to power tap when I can. That's it for that side. I'm going to flip it over and start on the other side. Alright, so this is my uh, uh, eight hole side of the wheel, and it's going to be uh, 3816. running the lowest speed that my mill will do. Which is 80 on the uh, chart here. A little faster than I like, but that's the slowest it'll go. So that's two down. Only took a few minutes. Yeah, it won't take me long. I'll have all of them drilled and tapped. Alright, so I got all the holes drilled and tapped in the roller here. You can see this is the eight hole side. This is the side that the uh, bearing plate is going to go on. And then this is the dust cover side here. So the roller itself is actually finished. Like I said earlier, the shaft's done. I've still got to make the uh, still got to make the plate that's going to bolt to this side here. But it'll kind of look like this whenever it's assembled. There'll be a plate that slides over and sits here. And I haven't got that far yet. This is a this is a drawing of it right here that I made a long time ago. That <clears throat> the uh, bearing plate that sits here. This is what I got to make. And I just don't, I don't have the material right now. What I'm going to do is, uh, my buddy at the welding shop, he's got a CNC plasma table. So it's real easy now to just have him burn me out plates whenever I need it. Uh, it's a lot cleaner job than me getting my torch out and cutting out the plates. So I just tell him what I need, he throws it up on there and he burns it out. <clears throat> but what I got to get is a piece of three quarter plate. 
and I had a piece here of this 8 inch that I thought might have worked, but it's actually a little bit too thin. It's about a sixteenth smaller than what I've got to finish it at now, so I can't use this piece. But i got to get a piece of three-quarter plate burned out, about seven and a quarter OD. I'll machine it. It'll be completely faced and turned. Board, it'll have the uh, whole pattern drilled in it, countersunk, so that it'll pull up flat here. And then the, uh, the dust plate, it's actually the camera sitting on it. This is one that I had my buddy burn out for me. This is the the dust plate here, just a piece of quarter inch. I believe I had them burn at six and a quarter OD. And it'll just go on the back side here. Like so. So I gotta drill the hole and uh, countersink them for the bolts. And in the center there'll be a grease fitting here. So coming along and uh, Whenever I get started on the uh, plate for this side, I'll do some video of that and uh, show you how I make that there.